Hello, dear friends. Today, I would like to tell you a story that happened in a game that I run as a GM. This happened very recently. This happened last week, over the course of a couple weeks, I guess. But the campaign has been happening for two years. Big success. I love when players are engaged and excited enough to want to stay for that long for such a thing. It's a lot of commitment. We play weekly. It's a big deal. So, what do we play? We play Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. We are a group of, um, I'm the GM. We have one rogue, one rogue and bard as well. In addition to just the regular rogue, we have a uh, wizard and we have an artificer. We are running on the Sword Coast in Waterdeep, two modules. The first is Dragon Heist, where the players are supposed to level up from like one to fifth level, first to fifth, and then we run Mad, Mad Mage after that. Mad Mage is under mountain, also located in water deep, but deep, deep beneath it. And water deep is exciting and fun, but the idea of locking my players in a 21 story tall mega dungeon and never really letting them out again is a lot. So I have ways for them to be able to more easily get back to the surface. It also allows us to change up the gameplay. If we're tired of mega dungeons, we go back up to the surface. So that's where we are. We are essentially back in water deep, running side quests and re-exploring once again, the various different plot threads that were partially explored while running Dragon Heist. Dragon Heist is cool. You can run four different villains. Not at the same time, you pick one. We chose Xanathar. I chose Xanathar. Um, the others, the other options are more like human villains. And I really enjoyed the idea of a beholder that runs the not official, but might as well be Thieves Guild beneath Waterdeep. So fast forwarding a lot. There's a couple ways that you can mess with Xanathar's lair. And my players not only hit every single one, but were able to ultimately slay Xanathar. I know, I hear GMs out there saying like, don't let that happen. Well, things, things happen. <laughs> um, and not only that, they also were able to destroy a mind flare and all of Xanathar's operations at the same time. So allow me to tell you how that went down. Xanathar, again, has several ways that you can mess with its operation. I'm going to be referring to Xanathar with it, its pronouns. That is what the book suggests, so that's what I'm sticking with. Xanathar has a couple things that can really mess them up. One of them is messing with or eliminating some of its underlings. One of them being like Nazca or Grey or something like that. I think they're a dwarf. That happened back in like level three when my players were running. So I mean, my players were uh, investigating the dock ward rather. So that was step one of messing with Xanathar's operation. Step two, these don't have to, have to happen in order. Um, I decided it would be a lot of fun for one of the magical keys that my players needed for it to be Xanathar's goldfish. <clears throat> Xanathar's goldfish. Silgar. So Xanathar, if you don't know, loves only two things in life. Itself, of course, it's a beholder, and Silgar the goldfish. Those are the only two entities that are worth existing, <laughs> basically, in its mind. Those are the perfect beings. Itself, not even other beholders, just itself and Silgar the goldfish. So a long time ago, my players were able to kidnap and use Silgar as a key. So that also messed with Xanathar's operation. Additionally, my players got, through a subplot, the eye scratch poison, which they held onto for a solid year in their inventory. And it's a one use item. You can coat like a sword or a 
a series of like five long reins, like pellets or crossbow bolts or arrows, right? With this poison. So they held onto it for a year. So they had that to also mess with its organization. And there's another subplot, which they never got to until they did without realizing it. Um, <laughs> where somebody is trying to blow up Xanathar's lair with, I think it's like barrels of gunpowder that's at strategic lo locations beneath the lair. So here's how it goes down. My players are investigating some rumors of some cranium rats that are pestering different bars and things throughout Waterdeep. Cranium rats are essentially mind-controlled rats. They actually had their brains sticking out a bit because um, they've been altered. While I was having the Mind Flare do that, which is one of Xanathar's underlings. And so they were following the lead as well as some other reasons that they were down there um, to go figure out what was happening in Xanathar's lair to see if they could figure out the source. One thing leads to another my players discover a secret room. A secret room full of Xanathar's embalming fluid surrounded experiments. I guess they're like the, what are they called? They're like the gross fungusy kind of beholders. I, I forget right now off the top of my head, doesn't matter. So when my players saw that, they did the only reasonable thing to do, fireball. So they blew up the lab. After some deliberation and discussion, we realized that embalming fluid is flammable and explosive. Okay. So they blow up a significant portion of this area, causing the beginnings of structural instability in this underground layer. Xanathar sees this and is completely pissed because they were there for reasons. They were watching the players, or it was watching the players, Xanathar, with its invisible ring on. It removes its inv invisible ring and declares to the players that it's tired of them messing with its plans and blah blah blah. And Silgar, you took Silgar away from me, all this stuff, right? battle commences. My players are a bit over leveled for this, just by a bit, but what happens next is ridiculous. So I like to give my players inspiration because they are smart. They are constantly earning it by being very clever. What's a good way to survive a whole bunch of death beams to the face? it's rolling well and succeeding on your death saves, or not death saves, succeeding on your con saves and deck saves and things like that. A good way to do that is inspiration. So through a combination of my players being very clever and careful, conserving their inspiration, and admittedly earning some inspiration mid-battle for being very clever, they also were able to free a bunch of prisoners that were nearby and convince them to help out in the fight. So now Xanathar was severely outnumbered despite being able to fly and everything else. Xanathar had tried to land many blows upon the players, which would have been fatal. Like one hit, dead player kind of thing. But enough inspiration and assistance, distractions later. Well, Xanathar was down to half health. And Xanathar just became blinded by the eye scratch poison from a successful arrow, which means it can no longer use its eye beams anymore. Oh dear. So, that was another way to mess with the lair is to successfully use the eye beams. I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> to successfully disable its eye beams with the eye scratch poison. So check another one off the list. <laughs>
Xanathar is blind. They turn invisible and they run. They flee. They're like, no, fuck this. I hate you all, but I want to live more. So it leaves and it goes through its lab, its burning lab, to try to escape because it has an escape hatch that way. Unfortunately, do you remember how I mentioned that there were explosives, explosive barrels? It just so happens that that room, the main one, is one single wall away from where the players launched the fireball at a bunch of very highly explosive material not that long ago. Chain reaction occurs. <laughs> As the entire layer begins to crumble, Xanathar, with half health, is unable to get to where it's trying to go to escape. It is blind. It becomes covered in rubble and gets hit by a massive explosion. Xanathar's dead. <laughs> There's no way around it. So that was exciting. That was a whole thing. And now the whole layer is collapsing. I actually calculated uh, how long my players really had to escape and how much damage I could deal to them through the layer collapsing around them to basically have at the end of the initiative more stones fall and begin to hit them as the structural integrity gets worse in the whole layer. <laughs> my players run. Good idea. With all of the prisoners that they helped to escape so far and they go to the stairs the way out. They are right there. But so is the Mind Flayer. The Mind Flayer who controlled the swarm of cranium rats from before. One of the reasons why they're there. And so, I decided to have a big battle breakout. I was super excited. Was like, okay, you took down Xanathar, but this is a Mind Flayer. This is a whole other thing. This is going to be exciting. This is when, at the top of the turn, or the beginning of the battle, basically, before it quite begins, my bard player rolls a 27 on persuasion. Now, I'm not the kind of GM to say that you can roll persuasion to have a king give you its kingdom. But I'm also not the kind of GM to have a good roll with some clever words, go unrewarded. So I gave them a surprise round. During the Mind Flayers monologuing and digging into your mind and all that, you launch a surprise attack. You get a full surprise round. And um, my players are clever and strong. And they have help. And I might have miscalculated the combat difficulty because Within one and a half turns, the Mind Flayer had low initiative and the full surprise round went off first, of course, from only my players. They took out the Mind Flayer and all of its guards, which were intellect devourers. Um, a turn and a half. Now, why is this surprising to me? Well, <laughs> the Mind Flayer has planar shift which means that within one action, it could just leave. And yet they killed it because it never got a turn. It just never got a single turn to even do a planar shift, let alone anything else interesting or exciting or clever. And so then my players defeat a mind flare and leave as Xanathar's lair collapses behind them. Oh my goodness, what a delightful disaster. So once more to recap, my players are following some leads. They discover a crazy lab full of explosives. They blow it up, which triggers some more explosives, which was the final checkbox that had a really messed up Xanathar's operation. They destroy Xanathar which I'm kind of fine with because they explored every single way of messing with that layer at that point. <laughs> Xanathar's operations, no more. They have completely messed it up. 
And on the way out, within a turn and a half, they defeat the Mind Flare. It's incredible. I love my players. Would I do things differently? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I would probably stop underestimating my players a bit more. Um, I definitely had more difficult encounters in the past. <laughs> um, but I really thought I was leveling things correctly, which is so funny. Clearly not. But that's okay. Because we had so much fun. And you know what else? I get to tell this story. I think it was worth telling. And uh, I thank you all for listening to this tale. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. This has been Fatal. Later.